What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to episode 56 of our Tracksuit to the Top series here with Lewis FC for the first time ever in the English Premier Division. What a glorious line that felt like to say. Hopefully you guys are good. If you missed last episode, it was a recap of the save so far. We look back at the first six years of the save. Today, we start our first ever Premier League campaign. And it's going to be one hell of a challenge. Um, so yeah, let's talk about what's happened in this kind of pre-season. So, we obviously got promoted to the Premier League. Fantastic. Um, we had £11 million transfer budget and £180,000 to spend on wages a week, which is tiny. Uh, I believe last season we were spending around £130,000 a week on wages. Um, so we basically got a £50,000 increase, which when you consider we're moving up into the Premier League wasn't that great. However, uh, I did make the board request to increase our wage budget, and they have done that. So the wage budget for this year, if we just come to this screen... Um, sits at uh, £314,000 a week, and that's our wage budget. Um, and as I mentioned, that's less than what Burnley start with in the first season, kind of to put that into perspective of the kind of budget we're working on here. If you look at our actual finances, you can actually see at the moment we are making money, but we're still only about a million in the black. Obviously, Premier League TV money is going to help our finances go through the roof, and in fact, they're actually a little bit more negative. And the reason they're that is because we have got youth facilities and trading facilities being worked on, and yes... A new stadium is in the works. Um, it's going to be finished in two seasons' time. It is just going to be called the Lewis Stadium. And uh, it's going to hold 15,000 people, which is pretty fantastic. And uh, obviously great to just move into a new stadium. And obviously one of the big overheads of this year is the stadium. And as a result, that is one of the reasons why we don't have such a huge wage budget. But I'm more than happy to invest in a stadium. And I think that's going to benefit us more long term than a few extra players. So, as you can see, looking at our actual wages being spent, uh, it has over doubled our wage budget this year, but it's worth noting a lot of the players who got promoted with our side had 30% promotion wage rises, so they got big increases. However, we did make a few signings. There weren't a ton, if I'm honest, but um, we really looked to strengthen the defence, and obviously that's what we're now working towards. So, looking at our transfers for the year, just first and foremost on the out. Um, I don't think there's anyone here of any real note. There's a few players who were good players for us. I mean, but a lot of them were the regions that I brought in, hoping they might be good and we might be able to sell them on. And to be honest, they, none of them turned out to be any good at all. Um, so the risk really wasn't worth it on half these players. Obviously, we've made some money back over the course this save on some good young players. Keown, perhaps one of the players who wasn't a regen who it might surprise you to see leaving, but ultimately he wanted a pretty hefty wage rise and I wasn't happy to give him it. So anyway, looking at the ins, we have only spent £6.35 million on players, which for a first season in the Premier League, it's not a tiny amount, but it's not a ridiculously large fee. The first transfer on the ins... Neven, he, he was out a job, and I wanted to give him a job and give him a wage, so he's come to the side. If we're still up at the end of the season, he might play the last game of the year. Darian Neven, of course, one of the players who was a hero of our first ever uh, year of the save, where he got 17 goals in 26, and then the following year he got 32 in 39. Um, I couldn't help but bring him back. The next player we actually brought in was this guy, um, Kenan Fezzik. However, I didn't really rate him as what highly as I was hoping he was going to be. Um, he just wasn't an improvement on what we had, so I terminated his loan, which isn't the first time I've done that on this save. Um, he was a good centre-back, but obviously in England you can only have two long-term domestic loans from other English sides, and uh, there were two alternatives that came up that I decided to pursue instead, so as a result his loan was terminated. Anyway, one of the loans that wasn't a domestic loan who we have for this year is Laurens de Bock, uh, who is a Belgium international, 27 years old. He's on loan from Olympiacos with pretty small wages, only 8.25k a week, which is pretty small. Uh, and he can play left-back, and he's a very good left-back, good mental uh, attributes, good defensive attributes. You can see he's a very good, well-rounded full-back. And um, we've really had to try and reinvent our back for our defence this year, and that's something that we've done. Anyway, the next player, another kind of player, I guess, to add to our defence was this guy, Varazdat Haryan. Haryan. We'll just call you Haryan, the Armenian international centre back. Signed him from McCarthy Haifa. 
Is that how you say it? I can't remember. It's the Israeli team. Regardless, he joins us for £1.7 million, having had a very good season at his club the last few years, really. It's going to be a big step up for him this year, him coming from, obviously, the Israeli leagues. But he looks like a very good centre-back. Got some really solid mentals, which I like. Good technicals in terms of his heading, marking and tackling. And his physicals are pretty well balanced and pretty well rounded. So a good centre-back will be starting at centre-back for us this year and I'm very happy to have him at the club. The next player is the long-term domestic loan that wasn't um, Matthew Lewis who we did extend the loan off for this year. So Matthew is still at the club. Unfortunately he's not on the list for whatever reason. But Mick Tyson here, a very good player. Uh, he's actually going to be playing right back for us this year which doesn't suit him great because he's not the fastest player. But for what we need from a defender, he was one of the best defensive players we could get in. He comes on loan from United for the year, and he's a very good fullback and centre-back at this level. So I'm pretty happy to get him in. The next player is now the club's record transfer, and it's this guy, uh, Serjan uh, Mijelovic. I guess that's how you'd say his name. Serbian international. He's incredible. Uh, naturally a centre defensive mid. We're actually going to be playing him at centre back. His inability in the air and his lack of ability in the air might hurt us a little bit. But he's a very, very good centre back regardless. And he's just a very good well-rounded player. To sign him for £3 million I think is an absolute bargain. Uh, with us getting promoted we had the ability to scout Europe. Um and scout you know here there and everywhere and as a result I've been kind of sending my scouts out on assignments that you can see um, and he was one of the players who got thrown up from one of these assignments so that was pretty good um, as you can see we've got all kinds of different random leaks being scouted at this point there's a few assignments which I cancelled and a few that I kept going but we got some pretty good players that kind of came onto the radar as a result of our scouting and our increased knowledge because of our new scouting system. So anyway, uh, next transfer in was Joe Allen on a free. A very good free transfer. Joe Allen, he's not the craziest player, but he's coming in on 30 grand a week. He will be the highest paid player at the club. But he's a very good centre mid for a team entering the Premier League. Very, very nice mentals. Good bit of experience, something that we've not really had in the squad in abundance. And just a very good, well-rounded centre mid. Uh, perhaps his inability in the air holds him back a little bit, but he's very good defensively and going forward, and I'm pretty happy to have him at the club. And the last player was just Tiago Casola. Um, or, yeah, Casasola. Uh, a player who used to be very good in older FMs. Um, we just got him in for really cheap from Bristol in League One. Joins us for under a million pounds. He's on very, very small wages. Just a very good backup centre back, really. Um, just something that I needed just a backup of, and he does a job for us. So, anyway, looking at our team for this year, you may have noticed the big kind of strength adding was in the defensive department. Our back four is pretty much a fresh back four, but looking at our team, Kua Ku starts in goal in our best starting 11, which is the team we are capable of playing today. So the Ivorian international goalkeeper uh, improved a lot last year, and I'm very pleased that he's kind of stayed at the club and not kicked up too much of a fuss about potentially wanting to leave. At right back, we go with Mick Tyson, who's on loan from Manchester United. Uh, in the back two, we have Harry Yan and Mijelovic. Uh, left back we have Dubok, who I already introduced. Our midfield, obviously Joe Allen, new addition there. He's going to be playing the ball-winning midfielder role for us. But three other familiar names in this midfield. Rolando Aarons has stayed at the club. He's extended his contract for another four years. He's on £20,000 a week, the Jamaican international. Obviously, he's been an incredible player for us the last two years. Last year, he had his best ever season with 25 assists and nine goals in 42 games. I'm hoping he can maintain that level of performance again this year. Out on the right, we have Casper de Noor, the uh, Belgium player. Surprised he's not been called up internationally. Maybe that's something that could happen for him this year. Uh, you can see last year he played at 27 games, 7 goals, 4 assists. A good performance. He wasn't incredible, but uh, he keeps his spot by virtue of the fact that we didn't have the money to strengthen the right midfield area. And um, He's a very good player in terms of his attributes, and I'm hoping that sooner or later he might start performing fully to those. Anyway, at centre mid, one of the players who's really been a breakthrough player, particularly last year when he finally got a work permit, is Eric Sonogo, the Ivorian uh, international, of course, one of two in our starting eleven. Uh, he's a very good centre mid. He's improved a lot again last year. 21 years old, he's still very young. Um, just a fantastic player. You know, he he plays the roaming playmaker role for us in this system, and he's just so good at it because of how well-rounded he is. 
Looking at his scout report, you can see um, he could improve in the future. He's a leading Premiership player, at least in the eyes of my system, which is good. And he's also a consistent performer. And to be honest, he's the player I'm hoping is going to make a massive difference for us. I'm hoping he might be, this is going to sound like a really corny analogy, but if you can think of Blackpool when they got promoted to the Premier League for the first time and Charlie Adam was kind of single-handedly keeping them up, or at least looked like he was single-handedly going to keep them up the first half of the season. That's what I think Sonoko is going to be capable of in our centre midfielder uh, kind of position. He is our Charlie Adam of Blackpool the year they were in the Premier League. Anyway, uh, our front two, same as last year, Matthew Lewis returns on loan again. Newcastle happy to loan him to us, which is kind of surprising considering Newcastle are another Premier League team and last year they only finished 12th. Because um, really, he's a good player for a Premier League team with his current ability. Perhaps a little bit one-dimensional in his pace, but that's not held him back in the last few years um, that he's been playing. And obviously last year, he had his best year pretty much since he left us back in the conference. He played 44 games, got 31 goals, which is ridiculous. And of course, the player who made that possible alongside him, Ihi Nacho, um, has signed a new contract, as you can see here. He's on a five-year deal on £15,000 a week. Really happy that he signed a five-year deal. Really happy that his wage demands weren't ridiculous, the 23-year-old. But as you can see, last year, obviously, 37 goals in 42 leagues, 14 assists and 10 player of the matches. He single-handedly bossed the championship, and I'm hoping we're going to see a little bit more of that in the Premier League. He's a very good Premier League striker. I think one of the things that holds people back and new teams back when they get promoted to the Premier League is not having a goal scorer. We've obviously got Ihi Nacho and we've also got Matthew Lewis and I'm hoping between them they can be able to bag enough goals to keep us safe. Looking at the bench, um, obviously you'll see a few familiar names. We have Luke McGee who joined us last year as our backup goalkeeper. He signed another one-year deal extension, which is nice. Balfwick Jackson, of course, our centre-back since League 2, uh, has been demoted to the bench this year. Again, just a, a result of getting promoted back to back to back. Um, you know, he, he's just out of his depth at this point. And that's the case for a lot of these players. Again, Lewis Thompson joined us back when we were in League two I believe uh, obviously he's improved a long lot at the club during his time here but um, he's at that point now where he's kind of hit his potential unfortunately because of our kind of budget constraints I haven't been able to give us massive strength in depth so a lot of the players we have here are players who have been at the club a while and I'm hoping that they're just going to maintain the level of performances I guess I know that they're capable of in the lower leagues uh, when they have to play in the bigger stage Lukunku of course a player join us in league one uh, Shea Ojo also joined us in League One, the centre mid. Actually, a potentially good Premier League player. The big letdown for him is his inconsistency, which isn't even showing at the moment as a con, but that's been something that's kind of been prevalent. He's also had some injuries, and his lack of big match kind of important matches attribute holds him back. But all in all, a good player, Ojo, and a player who we can more than kind of, guess, rely on to bring on off the bench. He's a good centre mid. Uh, and he's improved a lot during his time at the club. Cameron Stewart, another player who's improved during his time at the club. Probably not a Premier League quality player, but he's been with us since League 2 and he's always performed and punched above his weight. Um, and I'm hoping we're going to see more of that this year. And the last player that makes up our bench for this first game of the season is Jerome Sinclair, the striker. Um, he has been kind of kicking up a fuss about wanting out and wanting to leave. Obviously, he was an incredible player in his first year at the club. He dominated, you know, 28 goals in 28 games in League One. And then last year, he's, he just got hit by injury. It was incredible. Like if I just show you the history of injuries for, I guess, 2019-2020, you can see bruised ribs, chest injuries, flu, knee ligaments. There was just always something holding him back, and that's been the case, really, for the last few years, which is a shame, because even when we were in League One, he was struggling. The issue I had last year was he was getting injured, and then with Lewis and Ihi Nacho performing so well, it was very difficult to drop them in favour of him, and I'm pretty confident if I had given him a run of games, he would have pl played well, but it was just not possible. Anyway, uh, other players who we have, who are one of which I'm moving now onto the bench, Craig, uh, Craig Mullen, player who has obviously been at the club since the beginning. He's been here throughout our leaping up through the league he's played at least one game in every division that Lewis has been in for the duration of this save maybe we'll give him a game in the Premier League he's a good keeper but he's a good championship keeper and that's just the sad reality of it unfortunately um 
So yeah, pleased to see him still in the side and it's good to have him here, but he's just not going to play much. Victor Garcia is our second choice right back. A good athlete, but just doesn't have very great technicals. Obviously last year he played for us. He's a player we put, brought in on a free from the Honduras team marathon. Uh, who released him. I found him via the Honduras first team because he was get playing first team football internationally. He's a good right back, but he's just not a great right back. And that's kind of the story with a lot of these players. You've got players like Muleba, whose contract's currently expired, but he's kind of hanging around at the club, hoping he's going to be able to play. Judgeton is a good left back, but he's not great. Um, Tariq just hasn't performed since he came to the club, if I'm honest. Uh, there's been some clubs kind of sniffing around for him. We played him for 31 games last year and he just didn't impress me enough. And um, I guess with the team that we have at the moment, I just don't see where he fits in. I mean, I could debatably replace Lukunku for him and give him some runouts, but he's just not performed. Um, obviously, Tariq's a very well-known regen, in fo uh, not regen, wonder kid in football manager. Uh, but just kind of case in point, I guess, that players don't always turn out as good as they can in Football Manager. Anyway, Casola is a reserve player, obviously, who I mentioned before we signed for fairly cheap. Pierce Sweeney, we picked him up in League 2. He's still around at the club. He's still happy to be here. Obviously, this year, he's going to be one of our backup players. And there's a few other players here, like Liam Walsh, who picked up in League 2. Hedegaard, who we picked up at the start of last year as a rotation option, but never played. Alex Samuel is still here, the 20 four year old we signed him when we were in league two he was a great player for us and even last year he didn't play badly but we have three strikers better than him and it's just the sad reality of it that as we've gone through the leagues we've always had very very good goal scorers and so those good goal scorers who perhaps uh, haven't played so much in the last few years and so aren't the best goal scorers in our team they, they just don't play and that's just case in point i guess with alex samuel so in terms of how we're playing this year we're going to go with a very similar system to previous years. However, we are playing on countered with structured um, kind of instructions. Um, it's a similar system, but we're going to be looking to hit teams on the break. We have some really good pace in the midfield. Obviously, Aarons has 18 acceleration, 17 pace. Denor has 16 acceleration, 17 pace. Sinogo, 14 acceleration, 14 pace. And then in the final third, obviously, we have Lewis with 19 acceleration, 17 pace. We just have Ihi Nacho with 15 acceleration, 15 pace. Um, we're going to be looking to hit teams fast on the break in case that wasn't obvious by the pace that we have. It's something that is going to benefit us a lot this year, um, but it's going to be a tough season. Um, in terms of the board expectations, the board wanted me to tr attempt to avoid relegation, so they thought we would go straight back down. I changed the board expectations to avoid relegation because I think that that is doable. I feel like we have some very good players, players like Ihi Nacho and Sonogo are going to have to perform for us though if we want to do well. I kind of feel like if Matthew Lewis and Ihi Nacho can get 25 goals between them, we'll be fine. That's kind of, I kind of feel like it, there's going to be a lot more, what's the word, reliance on our strikers to score big goals rather than our defence to hold firm every game. Obviously, we do have some good additions at the centre-back position, so I'm hoping that's going to serve us well. But anyway, let's get into today's game. It's at home against Stoke. A huge game. The first game of the year, QPR beat Chelsea, so anything is possible. Um, we already have the team that I want to play. I already talked about that. You'll also be pleased to know, everyone, that I have actually numbered the players semi-properly, at least the first team because that's something that everyone always moans about in my videos and stuff, is the fact players aren't numbered properly. Well, there you go. Kuwaku's got number 13, so I think I gave Mullen number 1 because I was feeling kind. I did. But other than that, it's almost numbered properly. For you. And in fact, I think it is numbered properly. I even went on Wikipedia and looked for the quote-unquote correct way to number a 4-4-2 team in England, traditionally. But the squad numbers mean nothing to me, but... I know I always get comments about the fact I've auto-numbered players and stuff, and people are outraged, so that's for you guys. Anyway, uh, we've obviously got a big game here. Denor gets a knock immediately. I don't even want to risk it, if I'm honest. I'm just going to bring on Cameron Stewart. Well, that's a good start to our Premier League campaign, to get a player injured within a minute. Hopefully that's not the sign of things to come. Well, we've injured Deli Ali, so there's that, I guess. Um... Obviously Stoke, a bit of a long ball team, that's going to be a bit of our system this year really, trying to hit teams on the break and win against the run of play. This is the kind of game that we could do with trying to get a point from, you know, 
we've got to get a minimum of 38 points this year. Like That's obviously got to be the aim because that's roughly how many points you need to stay safe in the Premier League. You need to average about a point a game. Um, looking at it, Stoke having a lot more of the play. We're not playing that great at the moment. I'm almost tempted to go attacking. Let's just, let's just go for it. More direct, higher tempo. Playing a bit of hoof ball. Um, both our centre mids are booked, which is somewhat worrying. We'll have to just hope that doesn't affect us. It's quite odd seeing Yarmolenko at Stoke and... Okay, well, Cochran, or Co Cochran, yeah, Cochran has just scored for the Marie Gen. Um, I want to say that's not deserved, but looking at the stats, <laughs> Stoke are more than worth their lead. Um, but yeah, this year is going to be a tricky one. I think most of the live comms are going to be against the smaller teams in and around us, as opposed to the big Premier League teams, just because they're the games which are really going to matter. Uh, yeah, obviously the the budget that I have is tiny and as a result our squad depth is pretty weak and this is the most worried I've ever been, I think, probably as a manager getting promoted to the Premier League that um, my team might go straight back down. I don't think I've ever had it happen before, at least from a team I've built from a lower division. But because of the rate at which we've gone up leagues, this club hasn't scaled particularly well financially Um and that's obviously hit us hard this year with us being in the Premier League. But look at that. We've actually got a little bit uh, better in this um, in this half. It looks like we're doing a little bit more with the ball. I'm going to change a few bits and pieces here. But obviously we're chasing the game. We've got to go in hard. Uh, I'm going to take off Joe Allen because he's struggling. Looking at it, neither of our strikers performing well. And that's obviously a concern. Uh, I'm actually going to bring... Do I bring on Jerome Sinclair? I think I hold off for now. Just be oh, In fact, I can't anyway because I've already made three subs. But I want to sub out my centre mids because they're both tied and they're both already booked. And I'd rather not risk it. But uh, Sonogo here. Hit that. He scores. He is our Charlie Adam. First goal of the year for him. Take a bow, Sonogo. Take a bow. We're going to need some big goals from him. But that is a good one to start off the year. Hits it from a long way out. Keeper can only parry it into the roof of the net. The question is, do I stick or twist here? I'm almost tempted just to continue with what we're doing on the attack and hope that we might be able to grab a late one. But as I mentioned, a point here would still be a very, very good result. Anyway, Tyson, Sonogo, Ihinacho, Ojo, Matthew Lewis. Come on, do something this game. Sonogo, look for the pass. harry Ann. Sonogo, Ihinacho, Lewis. Matthew Lewis scores. It's 2-1 take a bow if there was ever a more fitting person to score in our first game in the Premier League I don't know who it would be but Matthew Lewis I think he epitomises this save he's got some huge goals for us it's a shame that we've only got him on loan I'd love to be able to make him a permanent signing but at least we've got him for this year yet and he's just got a goal which is going to be big for us I almost want to switch to contain, but I kind of feel like going defensive is probably the worst idea because we'll be inviting pressure upon ourselves. But we've got a win to kick off our Premier League campaign. What a comeback, boys. That is good character shown. You may have noticed that uh, Nitchin was playing for Stoke, of course, our former winger. Um, I don't know if I can find him real quick. Um, but obviously, former player, and uh, we've just bested him. Obviously, he played for us in League One. Um, but that's a great result. Um, I'm very happy about that. Obviously, it's a good win. Um, I don't want to say it was unexpected because they're the games that we are going to need to win at home. We need to make the dripping pan a fortress. Um, okay, Denor's not out for too long, so that could be worse. But no, that that's a very good result. I, I'm a very, very happy bunny. Uh, with what's gone on uh, just a few other little bits and bobs I can't remember if I covered these in the previous episode but my coaching setup has been changed obviously getting promoted to the Premier League we've got a lot more um, kind of money to put into the wages of staff so we've improved that quite substantially in a lot of areas um, and I believe we've also improved our youth coaching since the last episode I, I can't remember if I'm honest so if you watched the last episode and had all this stuff I apologise but you can see uh, our facilities are improving and as you can see we're due to move into our new stadium of course 
So yeah, that's pretty decent. All in all, a very good start to our Premier League campaign. I don't know when I'm going to be back for the next episode. I think I'm just going to go with the flow, but we got things off to a winning start. Harry Yan getting the Man of the Match award, our centre-back. So that's a good sign because we're going to need big performances from our defenders this year. But yeah, uh, that's going to wrap things up for me. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. If you did, smash the like button. Obviously, start of Season 7? Seven? I think this is our seventh season now, so it's going to be a big one. It's going to be a tough one, but hopefully you guys will stick it out. Next episode will be a big one, I'm sure. And uh, yeah, if you've enjoyed the video, smash the like button. If you've got any comments about the signings I made, uh, if you have any players who are on ridiculously low wages you've stumbled across in your own saves in the future that, that might be of use to me, let me know. Uh, and other than that, it is me, Jack, and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.